Hello everyone. The last uh, two class uh, we have discussed about what an uh, EDDO flight is. That is a flight which is operated beyond the threshold time of 60 minutes for twin engine aircraft, 90 minutes for NSOP aircraft with passenger capacity having less than 19 and 120 minutes for a aeroplane which has more than two in. In that we also have talked about the maximum diversion time, which is that time authorized by the regulator to operate for that particular airliner, maybe 90 minutes of extended time, 120 minutes of extended time, or maybe more than 120 minutes of extended time operations. And we have also talked about that distance you can travel within this Maximum diversion time is known as a maximum diversion distance. So within this maximum diversion distance, there should be a suitable alternate for the aircraft to divert. Should there be any requirement to divert to that alternate. So today in this class, we will see the planning considerations for that alternate aerodrome. First of all, the alternate planning is to be carried out considering those airport where the distance available should be more than the distance required to operate the aircraft. That is, since we are considering about the landing, the required landing distance or RLD, which we compute on the ground, or in-flight landing distance, or landing distance at the time of arrival should be lesser than or equal to the available distance. The next consideration is rescue and the fire fighting services that is the RFFS category of that particular airport. The minimum laid down by the ICAO for those aeroplanes who has got a gross weight of more than 27,000 kgs is 4. However, it can be considered up to 1 for all the other aeroplanes if the operator can provide 30 minutes of notification or if the operator cannot provide 30 minutes of notification, an acceptable RFFS category protection may be two categories below the aeroplane RFFS category required. For example, for an Airbus A320, the RFFS category required for normal operation is 6 and for A321 it is 7. So as far as the rule number Charlie is concerned, the RFFS category which can be accepted for the 320 is 4 and the 321 is 5. However, the particular operator may restrict this RFFS category to a particular minimum value. For example, some of the airliner restrict the minimum RFFS category to choose an alternate airport is RFFS category 5 for the A320. Apart from that, at the expected time of arrival, the weather minima at that particular airport has to be above the dispatch minima. So what exactly is the dispatch minima? The Android Alternate Aerodrome assessment should ensure that the forecast conditions at identified aerodromes will be at or above the operator's established aerodrome operating minima at the time of expected use. I have underlined this these words estimated time of use we will talk about the significance of this time as we go ahead with the class the edto dispatch minima planning considers for a precision approach the authorized da or the authorized dh plus 60 meters or 200 feet whereas in terms of visibility the additional requirement is that authorized visibility plus 800 meters. As far as the non-precision approach or a circling approach is concerned, from that authorized MDA or MDH on increment of 400 feet or 120 meters, as far as the visibility is concerned, the increment is 1,500. So now, we already know that these alternates are going to be within the distance between the threshold time and the maximum diversion distance 
on ground we need to see in the event of a situation where the need arises to divert to those airport we must compute the time from a particular place on route from where it takes equal amount of time to come back to the departure aerodrome or to proceed to that particular chosen airport. So this point where it takes equal amount of time between two sets of airport here in this case the departure airport and the first diversion socials this is what we call it as a equitime point since it exists in this particular route for the first time it is called the ETP1. Therefore any situation which requires the diversion of the aircraft before this ETP1 the aircraft will now go back to Nairobi. At this equal point of time the aircraft will take equal amount of time for it to proceed to Seychelles or come back to Kenya. At this particular point the captain of the aircraft can choose either of this airport as the diversionary airport. As the aircraft crosses this ETP1 the aircraft will now have to go to Seychelles because it will take less amount of time to reach Seychelles. Till the time the aircraft reaches to an ETP, in this case an ETP2, equitime point 2, between Sessels and the Male. At equitime point 2, the aircraft will take equal amount of time to divert to Sessels or to go to Male. So the captain of the aircraft can choose any one of the two. After having crossed ETP2, the aircraft is going to take lesser amount of time to divert to Male till the time it crosses ETP3. At ETP3, once again, the captain of the aircraft will have two options, either to go to Male or to go to Colombo. After crossing ETP3, now it will take lesser amount of time to divert to Colombo till the time the aircraft crosses ETP4. Up to ETP4, the captain will divert to Colombo and after having crossed ETP4, it will take lesser amount of time to divert to the destination Singapore. So therefore, the aircraft will proceed towards Singapore. As we know that while computation of the EDTO entry point and the EDTO exit point, the consideration was that authorized single engine speed, that is either VMO, MMO, in still air and under ISA conditions. However, for computation of this equity time a point, in order to be more relevant, the prevailing wind or the forecast wind is used to compute the ETP1. So as you have spent enough time in your CPL or ATPL days to remember that uh, the critical point moves into the wind, right? The critical point which you have learned in the CPL days and ATPL is nothing different from this. That was also equitime point. This is also an equitime point. Here in this case, the equitime point between Kenya and Sessels or from Sessels and the Male. So remember that you have remember the CP moves into the wind. So since this equitime point being similar to that CP, it will move into the wind. What kind of a wind? It will move into the forecast. So, let me ask you a question in this case. Those of you who have started flying, that if you go normally from one place to another place, that is from departure to destination, how much of delay or how much can you reach early because of the change of wind or because you have to come navigate because of some weather? The change in the ETA is generally not more than 10 to 15 minutes. However, for this particular aerodrome on route, for example, Seychelles, do you have a fixed time of arrival? No, I don't have a fixed time of arrival here. Why? Because I can think of going to Seychelles, okay, starting from ETP1 till the time I cross ETP2. So anywhere in between these two points, you have a necessity to go to Seychelles, then you can divert to Seychelles. I do not know the time when will this situation happen. So from ETP1 to ETP2, I can go. Therefore, it will give me a band of arrival time at Seychelles. So I can come to Seychelles from ETP1 or come to Seychelles from ETP2. So therefore, there is a band of time. Here in this particular diagram, it is the 
largest band of time as compared to the band of time which is in between ETP2 and ETP3 for Mali and the ETP3 and the ETP4 for Colombo. So therefore we need to learn or we need to derive something known as the earliest time of arrival and the latest time of arrival. So the earliest time of arrival is considered that the aircraft has got airborne from Nairobi go to ETP1 without any problem and from ETP1 it will divert to Cecil's for any other reason which we have not considered during planning. The reasons which we have considered during planning was one engine failure, pressurization failure and a combination of both pressurization as and the engine failure. Apart from these three contingencies, we will divert to Cecil's for any other reason that is with normal operating speed. So the arrival time is known as the earliest time of arrival. As far as the latest time of arrival is concerned, the aircraft will go from Nairobi till the time it reached ETP2 normally and at this point at ETP we will consider that contingency which is the worst as far as the time is concerned out of the three conditions or the three contingencies we have already spoken about that is pressurization failure, engine failure and the engine failure with pressurization failure. If you recollect if we anytime we have an engine failure then I have chosen a higher speed to divert to the alternates. But in case of a pressurization failure normally I am advised to fly at the LRC speed which is much slower than the specified speed which was considered for certification of this EDTO route. So therefore he will take maximum amount of time. Apart from that if I have a loss of pressurization the aircraft will now have to descend to flight level 100 where there are no significant obstacles to the route mora when there is a significant obstacle on that particular route. So the aircraft will have to now descend from E. TP2 to fly level 100, fly with LRC speed and uh, reach sessions. This time is the latest time of arrival as we have considered the worst case as far as the speed was concerned. Apart from this speed, as the aircraft has descended up to fly level 100 or Mora, the TAS of that particular aircraft will also be lower as compared with the TAS of only one engine failure. So since the TAS is lower, the ground speed is also expected to be lower. So the aircraft will take maximum of amount of time to reach Sussels. So therefore, this arrival time is what we call it as the latest time of arrival. So the earliest time of arrival and the latest time of arrival can also will also be there for ETP2 and ETP3. For that aircraft will have to divert to Male, then aircraft has to come from Nairobi to ETP2 under full normal operating speeds and with normal operating speed it will have to divert to Male for some other reason. As far as the latest time is concerned, the aircraft will get airborne from Nairobi, proceed to ETP3 with normal condition, then thereafter it diverts to Male at flight level 100 with LRC speed with considering the pressurization failure and the reach Male, this will be the latest time of arrival for Male. So similarly, for Colombo also, it will have the earliest time and the latest time. Of. So within this earliest time of arrival and the latest time of arrival, the expected weather or the forecast weather at Cecil's in this case should be above the airline's operating minima. That is the dispatch minima in this case. Some of the airline subtract one hour from the earliest time of arrival and also add one hour to the latest time of arrival. In this particular example, if we consider the earliest time of arrival is 0900 hours and the latest time of arrival is 100 hours, some of the airline may consider that is 9 o'clock minus 1 hour that is 8 o'clock and the 10 o'clock plus 1 hour is 11 o'clock. Within this time, whether forecast at that particular alternate should be above the dispatch minima. This particular time that is 0800-21100 is known as the validity period of that 
So with this, we will end the class for today. In my next class, we will talk about the critical point, the critical fuel planning and the other flight planning aspects. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I request you to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of my video. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day.